our study is to really try to understand at the molecular level the distinction between different types of cells in your brain. And we developed a new method to be able to uh, understand these differences by looking at what's called the methylome. That is the, not the DNA sequence itself, but the modification of the cytosine bases on DNA it can tell us one cell type from another. Your genome consists of four bases, A, T, C, and G, but the C can be modified by the addition of a methyl group, and different cell types have different methylation profiles. Decades ago, neurons were identified by their shape. Uh, now we're taking a molecular approach by looking at this modification of the methylation profile between cells, and that tells us what type of cell it is pretty accurately. Our study compared the cortex of the mouse and human um, in an unbiased way, looking at the different neurons in the different layers of the cortex. And what we found was is that we could match the cell types from mouse to human, but we found there are actually more cell types in the human brain, as you might imagine, it's a bit more complex. I am the neurobiologist in this team. My interests are neuropsychiatric disorders, so you, we know that both for autism or schizophrenia, even bipolar disorder, depression, there is a circuit alteration. Those circuits are formed by neurons, but we do not know how many participate in that circuit. And when that gets imbalanced, we do not really know which ones are the one in balance. And that is what we are after, to see whether there is something specific to a cell type that is affected in the disorder. The existing method for studying uh, diseased brains does not separate brain cell types. So our study not only um, classifies cell types, we can also uh, review how genes are being regulated um, in the brain. So by using these single cell technologies, we can really focus onto the relevant cell type uh, that are potentially causal for the disease. Before you can understand how the brain works, we believe that you need to understand the parts list. And so the parts list is composed of the individual cells. And more importantly, we can develop from this information new tools to be able to study particular cell populations once we know that they exist. 